Good morning, my darlings. Welcome to a new day of Vlogmas. Are we on Vlogmas day 20? <gasps> the end is nigh. The end is very much nigh. So I am starting today very snuggled up in my layers. I'm actually here at Dalesford, at Bamford. I'm heading in to do a reformer Pilates class. <laughs> a reformer pilates class with chloe which i'm very much looking forward to doing i haven't done um as many reformer pilates this month i feel i just have you know i've been i don't know i think my diaries has been a little bit up in the air so i feel like i've not been sticking with my usual pilates routines which i would like to get back into the habit of i've got a few booked in this week which is great sneaking in a few pre-christmas oh my gosh i've just realized christmas is a week today Ah. Yeah, sneaking in a few pre-Christmas classes and then after class I am going to run into the farm shop and do a little bit of pre-Christmas shopping. Not the big Christmas food shop, I think Charlie and I are going to come and do that. Mm. We might have to do that on Friday perhaps? Because I do not want to be coming into Dalesford this weekend, it's going to be so busy. Anyway, let's head into class and then we'll do a little bit of... Dalesford Farm Shop Christmas shopping together. So this is the official major Christmas food section. Everything from your game pie, your bread sauce, Christmas gravy, your ham, some delicious side dishes, oh my goodness, Brussels sprout gratin, scrumptious, some veggie options, sweet potato slariac pie, we had one of these last week for a shoot day and it was scrumptious. I've just grabbed a little brandy butter. Oh my gosh, that'd be so nice for a Boxing Day cheese board, a lovely ham hock. Mm, scrumptious. I have followed Tegan on Instagram for many, many years, Half Baked Harvest, and I've done so many of her recipes. I did not know that she had a recipe book any of my friends are watching and need a little gift idea for me <laughs> this is officially a hint because oh my goodness there are so many <gasps> delicious looking recipes in here yum I'm coming back in for round two because I couldn't carry everything and I thought I'd bring one of my reusable bags in I didn't realize there was a festive choir here a couple of days ago Ooh. Oh my gosh, festive tractor trailer tour, 10 a.m. Okay, definitely need to come and partake in that. Come into the garden center for some festive foliage inspo. This is a lovely display of berries and hedgerow pieces. Lots of berries on the cut flower area. See, this is something I could potentially try to DIY as a table centerpiece. A lovely garland with berries, pines, Holly leaves. I always think that Christmas time is the best time of year to buy your things for next year because everything's always discounted. If only I was that organized. Well, that was a very successful shop. I've got loads of yummy bits for Christmas. Um, <laughs> Carl telling me off for various things. I will show you what I picked up when we get home. Um, but yeah, this is not the main Christmas shop because obviously we'll come and we'll get loads of like veggies and milk that's gonna last the festive period. And let's be honest, Charlie is the boss <laughs> when it comes to what we're buying for Christmas food. This is very tight. Bumped into two lovely, actually three lovely ladies, families that watch the YouTube channel. Um, a lovely family that had come all the way from Rome and um, they said that they had booked a week in the Cotswolds to do their very own, um, their very own Christmas in the Cotswolds. And then two lovely couples from Cardiff and Hello if you're watching, it's really lovely to meet you. And yes, it was a wonderfully peaceful, um, quiet shop. It's even though it's Monday morning, it was, yeah, I mean, busier than, busier than a normal Monday morning because it's December. But anyway, I'm blathering. I do this thing where I get in the car and I've got nothing to do other than talk to you. So I will show you what I have got in my shop when we get home.
my darlings, back home again. I forgot to even report on that Pilates class. It was very, very hard. As I was walking in, a few ladies that had done the class before me were walking out and they were practically hobbling and all saying how hard it was. And I was thinking, oh, this can't be that bad, but oh my goodness, even Chloe, um, who was taking the class, she was saying, this is an extra extra hard one, a final blitz before Christmas. <laughs> I feel like I've been doing a lot of pampering lately, but I've, I've treated myself to a hot stone massage this evening. So I like it when they're ultra oily and I get all oil in my hair. So I thought there's no point in washing my hair today. So I've just popped a load of dry shampoo in and I'm just gonna do a very, very quick five minute makeup. I have got a call at half past 11, a call with a beauty brand to discuss some content that we're probably gonna work on together in January. That's the thing about this time of year. I feel like everyone takes probably like a good 10 days off around Christmas. It's the best time of year if you work in social media because everybody actually switches off. It's not like when you go on a summer holiday and you don't... If you work for yourself, you don't really put out of offices on because you only come back after your holiday to a clogged up inbox. So at this time of year, when everyone is off, we actually get to chill. But it does mean any work that's going to go out in January, we need to start planning it right now. I've just popped on, as per usual, my Aborian BB Creme. This is the baby skin effect one in the shade Doré, which is basically my most used beauty product of the entire year. It's skincare and makeup in one. Always leaves your skin glowing um, and has skincare benefits as well. And I did have a 20% off code for it. Not 100% sure if it's still active, but if it is, I'll leave this link down below. Sorry, I look absolutely ridiculous right now. <laughs> That's a little bit better. Um, I have put most of my makeup brushes in the sink to give them a wash, so I'm gonna see if I can do pretty much my entire makeup with this one brush. Oh, I've got a, I've got a couple over there um, that I have not put in the wash yet. Charlotte Tilbury Bronzing Balm. I kind of flip between this one the Chanel one and the Beauty Pie one. Don't know if the Beauty Pie one has come back in stock yet, but I do find, oh, a bit patchy, but I do find that balm bronzers just give you such a healthy glow. Sometimes I just grab things that are not part of my usual makeup routine just to switch it up a little bit. Like this Clinique uh, lip liner. This is in the shade Intense Blush, lovely. Oh, I haven't used this Hourglass palette in a while, and that's got a blush in there, so let's give this a go. Whoa, it's quite intense. I always forget how lovely the Hourglass powders are. They're very light reflecting, which at this time of year, I just need all the help I can get when my diet is not quite so good, so you don't really glow naturally quite as much. I have, I always do two bronzers. I do my, the balmy bronzer is like the all over color and then I'll go in with something else um, to be a little bit more precise. This is the Golan Terracotta Golden Leopard. This is the five minute everyday makeup routine that nobody asked for. As you can tell with how relaxed and kind of rushed I'm being, I really don't take too long or do anything too precise with my makeup. This is the brush that I applied my BB cream with. Sometimes if I feel like the colour is a little bit too intense, I just kind of blend everything in with my foundation brush to just smooth it all out. And because it's right here in front of me, I'm going to use this Galan bronzer as an eyeshadow as well. Laura Mercier brow pencil in Ash Blonde. And then my favourite little bare brow brow gel. I ordered a new one from TikTok shop. Sometimes eyebrows go well very quickly and sometimes they just do not play ball. Today was the latter. And then a little duo from Shiseido on my lashes, a quick curl. Ooh. I have got a giant eyelash in my eyeball and I cannot get it out. Okay, that's just gonna have to stay in there for a while. 
<laughs> I just made my eyes go really red. And then the Controlled Chaos Mascara. Okay, I'm just going to finish with this lovely Kiko lipstick. This is in the shade Gossamer Emotion. It's one of their creamy lipsticks. Finish with a mist. And there we go. Normally I can do my everyday makeup in about five minutes, but today I have been talking to you, so it's taken a little bit longer. So I'm now going to head down to the office. I've got, as I mentioned, a couple of a couple of calls, um, and then we'll catch up a little bit later. How cute is this jumper, by the way? This is a barber one. Um, very, very cozy, great for dog walks, great for layering. I will leave a link to it down below. And just like that, it's four hours later. <laughs> I don't know where time has gone. I do. We've been, um, we've had our final Fashion Mumbler team meeting of the year. I've done a couple of calls and a little bit of admin, just tying up festive loose ends, tinsel ends. Um, and it has just occurred to us that a vlogmas tragedy has occurred and I have let you down <laughs> on one major aspect that is normally quite the um, interesting part of vlogmas which is festive baking. I just haven't done any this year. No gingerbread defender. If you're new to vlogmas this year it's a little bit of a Christmas comedy that I always try and do. An interesting gingerbread house. The first year was it 2020 or 2021 that I did a gingerbread version of this house? If I can find a picture of it or a screenshot or something, I will pop that on the screen here. And then last year I attempted a gingerbread defender. I'm not the most talented baker, but I will, <laughs> when I set my mind something, I will try very hard. And in the end, it normally cobbles together pretty well. But this year I've not done anything. Um, so I'm gonna head over to the store which is like an outdoor kind of shed where we keep excess miscellaneous stuff because even in this larger than average house we still have so much stuff that we have to put half of it in an outdoor store also just to avoid clutter so things that are seasonal like gingerbread cookie cutters for example are out in the store so i'm going to head over there um and just see what festive bakery themed items i can find and maybe that will inspire a little bit of christmas baking because i feel like some needs to be done otherwise it's just not vlogmas is it and then i've bought a notebook downstairs i've just asked charlie if he'll come down in a moment because i really you know we're we're a week out from christmas now and i really want to get it clear in my mind what we are cooking and eating each day so obviously christmas day we've got family coming on christmas eve there's boxing day there's the 27th i need to know what snacks i can prepare um can i like pre-make any cocktails and then just just and just make sure we've got all the ingredients today is also the day that i need to amend our festive avocado order i've currently just got it filled with things like loo roll and cleaning products but if there's anything that i can't get locally in farm shops then like one thing that i want for a certain cocktail for example is pomegranate juice and we cannot buy that um, from local shops unfortunately so things like that i need to just be aware of everything that we're going to be cooking making eating so that I can get the ingredients and just plan have it all in my head so yeah when Charlie comes down we'll go through our Christmas meal plan together but while I wait for him he's just sending the last of our invoices <laughs> for the year let's head over to the store and see what we can find well, I hope this is the exciting content that you're expecting from Vlogmas. Welcome to our store. Um, in here you'll find all kinds of goodies, excess oat milk, things that we've bought in bulk, whether it's laundry detergent, all the way through to dog food and tonic water and um, a lot of red wine by the looks of it. So in here we have got a lot of the alcohol that we actually bought for our wedding. <laughs> so we have got a lot of red wine. This is the Love by Leoub. Uh, we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 20. We've got 22 bottles of Love by Leoub red wine. I don't know much about red wine, but does it get better with age? Hopefully, maybe we'll save it as a vintage. Um, we've got quite a few of the same 
white wine. Now, I feel like Christmas is more of a sparkling wine, champagne or cocktail time of year, not such, not so much for traditional wine. Um, we've got a lot of rosé, a lot of rosé, which is great. And luckily, quite a bit of, ooh, our favorite nigh timber. I think what I will do is Dexy's charging around. I think what I'm gonna do, I've seen this quite a lot on Instagram, is make festive ice cubes, which will be like um, either sparkling water or cranberry juice with actual cranberries inside and a sprig of rosemary, rosemary, and then you just pour sparkling wine or champagne over the top, and it just elevates your champagne experience. So I just need to make sure on my shopping, <coughs> shopping list I've got things like the cranberries and I need to find the ice cube trays. We've got loads of tonic waters, we've got loads of the the newt apple juice, again from our wedding. How long have we got on these? These are best before November 2024 so they've got a little bit of time. Tonic waters, ooh pomegranate and basil. I feel like this could be really nice for a festive cocktail. Ooh, these are best before March 2024, so we need to find ways of using these. I swear things just get thrown in here and then forgotten about. We've got some spelt and ale crackers from the Newt here that definitely need eating. So what I'm going to do is just put together a basket of things that desperately need consuming over the Christmas period. Yeah, we've got loads of these crackers. Apple oat cakes from the Newt. It says slightly sweet for topping with chutney and cheese. These will be absolutely gorgeous. Well, this is not proving as successful as I'd have hoped. I was looking for particularly a muffin tin and a gingerbread cookie cutter, but having rummaged in a few of these boxes, I have been unsuccessful. This is the loot that I'm taking back to the house, the crackers, the Christmas pudding, um, and a few other little bits and bobs. But it remains a mystery as to where my baking tin and cookie cutters have got to. I'm sure they're in here somewhere, but I just honestly don't know where else to look. Please tell me that you guys have areas like this in your house as well where things just go and it becomes a graveyard and then you never find things ever again. It's like the opposite of the Harry Potter room of requirement. This is the room of inconvenience. The fire is lit, you might be able to hear a little bit of crackling in the background, and now I am armed with a few of my favourite cookbooks and recipe books, as well as the new one that we got this week, the Christmas at Highclere Castle book, and hopefully Charlie's going to come in and um, help me with this in a second, because I'm just trying to jot down all the meals and bits and bobs that I just mentioned over the Christmas period so that I can be a little bit more organized and make sure I've got everything that I need. I've actually just ordered a new set of Christmas cookie cutters um, from Amazon because I cannot find them. I have also just sent Charlie out there to have another look because I just don't know where they could be. But I'm just having a look through the Christmas at High Clear book in particular. And what's so nice is they actually have slight twists on the classic recipes like gingerbread men and mince pies and they also tell you a little bit about the history of um, the traditions of where these come from. I've always really wondered why mince pies are called mince pies because mince to me is meat and according to this originally before the 1800s um, they did in fact have meat in them which I was I did presume that to be the case given the name of them, um, but many medieval recipes combined sweet and savoury ingredients and pies were no exception. Sweetness came courtesy of honey and dried fruits as sugar would not, was not widely available. Along with spices such as saffron and ginger, dried fruits such as dates and figs, these all had to be imported into the country. 
So due to the inclusion of these expensive ingredients, spiced pies were not for every day. They were only served on important feast days such as Easter or Christmas, where they were both preceded by fasts. That is interesting. You don't really want to break your fast with something sweet. But anyway, <laughs> not that the medieval uh, people had Zoe, so they didn't know about things like this. It's hard to know exactly when meat was dropped from the mince pie. Mrs. Beaton's book of household management from 1861 originally gave two recipes for mince meat, one with and one without meat. Oh my goodness. The recipe was originally published in a book of cookery, spelt C-O-O-K-R-Y-E, very necessary for all such a delight therein, printed in 1591. So, wow. Mince pies sure have been around for a very long time. Now, this <laughs> medieval mince pie recipe does in fact contain lamb and beef, but I will be using Dalesford mince meat because it's one of those things where you can buy it and it's just as lovely, if not lovelier, than trying to make it at home. But what I am going to do probably tomorrow is make the high clear um, mince pie pastry and they put quite a lot of orange zest in it. So I think that'll be extra delicious. And then I've also saved their gingerbread, gingerbread recipe, which sounds really lovely, but I did need to order, and again, I've just done it on Amazon, some crystallized ginger. It's just one of those things where, like, where do you buy crystallized ginger from? So I will make those, maybe both, maybe just one of these with you tomorrow. Other things I'm going to be making based on my Instagram saved folders. I have been saving a few things down over the last couple of weeks. Something that I really want to do, and the person that's posted it is called Bevs by Beverly. <laughs> that's good. Um, she has done a frozen cranberry margarita for Christmas Day, and I think that this looks amazing. So she's covering the top of her glass with a kind of cinnamon cranberry juice, orange juice, agave nectar, tequila. I need to check that we've actually got tequila. That's the point. So that I feel like you could make ahead and just leave in the fridge in a glass, um, in a bottle, and then just mix it with ice when you're ready to serve it. I think that'd be a good shout. So maybe I'll make that on Christmas Eve. So maybe instead of writing a list of when we're gonna consume, I need to write a list of when I'm gonna make these things. We've got the Christmas pudding, as you just saw from the store, and I am gonna make eggnog ice cream. This is something that I'll probably make on Wednesday as soon as our Ocado order arrives, because you need a lot of cream, and I have ordered that in the Ocado order. Um, gingerbread ice cream was second choice, but I think I'm gonna try eggnog ice cream this year. And then, whew, for Boxing Day morning, these are really quick and easy to prepare. I'm gonna do the little baked brie bites where you do puff pastry, a little bit of brie in the middle. And Nathan actually yesterday brought us over a jar of homemade, he called it hedgerow and mint jelly. And I think that with cranberry and mint could be delicious. Any luck? Okay, sorry. the Jamie Oliver Christmas cookbook here and there's quite a few little post-it notes in here so it looks like I have made notes from here in Christmases past. The funny thing is that we always watch the Jamie Oliver Christmas um, cookery TV shows and Charlie always makes so many notes so a lot of our recipes are kind of Charlie's version of Jamie Oliver recipes. For example this rose potato recipe in this book is pretty much identical to our rose potato recipe and I noticed that one of the bookmarks here is Jamie Oliver's glazed carrots and again that is exactly what we do not only on Christmas day but for a lot of our Sunday roasts so I'm just gonna have a little flick through it's mostly canapes and little nibbly bits that I'm in charge of so that's what I need some inspo for it's amazing how you can really elevate your vegetables just with a few simple things like Sometimes when you go to, I don't know, 
a pub where they've just not really put that much thought into their vegetables you'll literally just get like a boiled or a roasted parsnip but then you can have parsnips with honey and thyme and what else has you put on here ground almonds garlic and it's just just elevates it so so much so jamie oliver recommends red wine vinegar runny honey a bunch of fresh thyme a clove of garlic four bay leaves all mushed together over your parsnips that's an instant way to elevate those um brussels sprouts again this is a recipe that we do as well with a little bit of pancetta in there that is delicious and then the cauliflower cheese so something that i need to remember this week when we have bread is actually to keep a little bit of stale bread because what's so lovely to get that amazing crispy top and this is something that i can definitely prepare in advance the crispy top is a couple of bits of stale ciabatta or whatever bread you've got some almonds and some thyme in the blender to put in. <laughs> popped in the blender sprinkled on top with some olive oil to make it tasty and crunchy on top so i'm going to add to my to-do list to make the topping for the cauliflower cheese i actually saw lauren mcdermott share on her instagram today that she was making her get ahead gravy that's this recipe here Again, very similar to what you'll have seen us do with our Sunday roasts many a time um, with the vegetables from a trivet. And yeah, you can make this. So Jamie Oliver makes it with chicken wings, which we actually just today placed our order for our chicken wings from the butcher. We'll pick them up um, in the next couple of days. And you can make this. We will probably make it on the 23rd. But as Lauren did today, you can make it a week in advance. You can put it in a bottle in the fridge or you can actually freeze it. So this makes your life on Christmas Day a whole lot easier. Ooh, baked bread sauce. Oh my goodness. I feel like I'm going to have to do this. Something else that is on my list of things to do because Charlie is the main cook is the bread sauce. And I've always just followed the Thermomix recipe, but let's have a look at Jamie Oliver's one. Semi-skimmed milk. English mustard, whole nutmeg, white bread. So why does he bake it? Oh my gosh. I'm gonna do it Jamie Oliver's way. Oh, this sounds sensational. This can be put together on Christmas Eve, ready to bake on the big day. But I'm not sure if we're having bread sauce on Christmas day. Do you have it with turkey or just with beef? Because we're having beef wellington on Boxing Day. That is a question mark. Okay, I've officially bookmarked the bread sauce. That's gonna be rather amazing. Cranberry sauce, I think we're just gonna buy that this year. I need to check if we've still got some horseradish root in the garden, because then I could make a really lovely horseradish sauce. Oh my goodness me. This is a whole selection of different pig in blankets. So not just a sausage wrapped in a blanket, but loads and loads of different different pigs. So we've got things like a de-stoned prune with a crumbling of blue cheese, yummy. Cocktail sausage and sage leaf, that's the obvious choice. A date with blanched hazelnuts and a drizzle of runny honey. <gasps> okay, I'm gonna do that. Dates wrapped in bacon with a little bit of honey. Ooh, one knob of brie style cheese with half a walnut and a little bit of thyme wrapped in bacon. Oh. Mm. Ooh, a ripe fig with pine nuts and a drizzle of runny honey. Oh my gosh, these all just sound sensational. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna make a load of these. One thing that I've actually never tried making is bubble and squeak, but it's in Jamie Oliver's book in the leftovers section. So ways to get a little bit more creative with your festive leftovers. And apparently it's just roast potatoes and then your leftover cooked veg. Ooh, all just in a pan until it goes crispy. That sounds delicious. Maybe something to try this year. Let me know down below what you do with your leftovers because I can't stand things going to waste. So any creative ideas would be very appreciated. Ooh, P 
pea soup with roasted ham, stilton honey, and apple toast. The fire is roaring away. Now, the last thing that I need to think about is a dessert to take to George and Petra's Christmas Eve drinks evening. And I think I'm just gonna do brownies because they are tried and tested. However, this is a slightly different recipe, again, from Jamie Oliver. This is a double chocolate, so dark chocolate and white chocolate with maple syrup and macadamia nuts. But could I swap the macadamia nuts for pistachio. I feel like that would be so delicious. Just a little bit of caramel on top and that will probably be absolutely sensational. So I think what I need to do is amend my Ocado order to also include some good quality chocolate. And I think with all this baking, I'm gonna need some more caster sugar and maple, no, more plain flour as well. And I should probably get a new baking powder because if it's out of date, your things are not gonna rise. So there we go. I think that is everything. Now I need to do the logistics, the ordering. Yeah, and then I feel more organized for Christmas yummy bits planning. I have connected my phone to our little radio that we have in the bedroom with some classical Christmas music. It's a little bit louder than I intended. Um, but yes, as I mentioned earlier, I have spoilt myself by booking um, a hot stone massage at home this evening. It's actually the same lady that does my nails. So I've also asked her if she'll very quickly do um, a gel nail removal. Not that, oops, not, sorry, I just dropped my camera. Um, not that my nails are looking bad in the slightest, but where they have, oh, it's really not growing out really not focusing um where they've started to grow out, grow out a little bit they keep catching down here at the bottom i have got a pre-christmas nail appointment on the 23rd where i'll get proper festive nails but i thought if nicole is able to take this gel off tonight then i can do a diy pre-christmas week um manicure using my manicurist set tomorrow i've just popped on some nice face oil the gate has just made a noise so she's here so i'm gonna let her in she'll set up the space in our bedroom it's gonna be very relaxing and um i'll see you on the other side 